Good morning. I give you a warm welcome in Jesus' name. It's great to see you here this morning and super that we have this opportunity to worship God together. There are a number of announcements that I'm going to rattle through before we begin our worship together um, kind of properly. And um, two of those announcements are not going to appear on the screen. So let me do those first in case I forget. And um, the first is that the monthly intimation kind of forwards notice sheet is available today. Many of you receive this by email. Um, if you don't, then you can take a paper copy today. And if you could receive it by email, then if you speak to Margaret, she will add you to the email list. And the other um, announcement that we don't have a slide for is um, a note from the Eco Group. And they are reminding us that COP28 starts on the 30th of November, that's this Thursday, in Dubai. And um, the Eco Group are asking people from the congregation to commit to praying daily for the 13 days of negotiations. Each day at 8 a.m., um, Green Christian, which is uh, an organization, they, they organize 10 minutes of prayer and reflection, focusing on the theme of the day. And um, the Zoom link for that will be on Facebook and emailed out um, to those on the mailing list. And there's also going to be a list of themes for each day so that you can pray in your own time at home. So if you want to know more about that, then speak to Kat, who's there, or um, Claire, who's at the front, okay, and they will be able to give you more information. Thank you. On to the announcements that are on the wall, and we're going to welcome one another in Ukrainian with a Glaswegian twang. Are we ready? Leskavo prosimo. Welcome in Ukrainian. I've already welcomed those of you who are here in the building. Let me add to that, those who are watching at home. Um, and a good number of folks watch week by week on Facebook and YouTube. That means that um, if you're up here at the front of the, the room, then you will be on camera. And so please be aware of that. If you don't want to be a YouTube star, then stay in the seats where you are. The lectern is never on camera, so you're okay if you're on the reading. There are parts of the church, vaguely, that are socially distanced, there is hand gel, and of course, if you're not feeling well, please do not come on a Sunday morning. COVID is still with us. We're on to the last Sunday of November, and um, so the charity of the month, Samaritan's Purse, this is the final opportunity to give in the retiring offering, so please do give as generously as you possibly can. And we want to say a huge thank you for all of those shoe boxes that were filled, 71 plus all of the um, money given uh, to various appeals over the last few weeks. Very, very generous giving, and we're grateful for that. In the second half of the service, the youth groups are on, and again, we just say thank you to those who work in these different areas, the creche, bridge, crossover, epic, and jigsaw, and for all of the work they do in preparation. Thank you to those who sent in a photograph of yourself with a light, because um, that, that was the theme of the house groups during this last week. Um, it, it, arise, shine for your light has dawned. And um, we're really grateful for those photographs. You'll see them during the service. And for next week, oh, I don't even want to put it up. I know, a photo of you with a Christmas card. Um, so, if you've already received one through the post, put your hand up. We have. Yeah, it's really depressing. Um, and if not, then maybe you've still got last year's kicking about. And if not, you maybe need to buy this year's and then take a photograph of yourself with one. Okay, or make one. A photo of you with a Christmas card for next week. <gasps> oh. Huge thanks to those who came to Lilyburn and Birdston last week. We had a great time. And the folks there so appreciate the services month by month. So thank you for making that happen. And there was, um, that was the house groups this last week. Um, thank you to those of you who came. I know those who were there really enjoyed and appreciated the discussion together. Um, some of you didn't get anywhere near the end of the sheet. You were so chatty about the early topics. So um, thank you for supporting that. Kathy Connects on a Tuesday. 
and um, I encourage you to use that space for a blether or for working in. And Wednesday night, seven o'clock, um, time to pray. Come when you can, leave when you must. I arrived at 7.30 last week and uh, got 10 minutes. That's okay. That's, um, that's perfectly acceptable. Last night, this place was full with um, folks um, singing up here on the platform and in the audience for the Father Song concert. We're um, delighted to announce that £500 was donated last night from those who were there. If you weren't there and you wish you had been or you weren't there and you're glad you weren't, then you can donate today. It is not too late to um, put something in for the SU holidays uh, and go mad appeal. This Wednesday at 6, there's um, the film Harriet's being shown, fish and chips from Galonies. Tickets cost £6.30. They're available from Anne today, not Joan. That's last week's slide. Anne Pert has got the tickets today and you need to get those today because the order goes in for fish and chips tomorrow. Next Sunday is Mangerama, Go Mad Extra. And publicity has gone out to all the youngsters who were involved here and at Campsie during the summer. We're hoping for a full house. It's going to be a fantastic two hours. So um, if you know of somebody preschool, three plus, right the way up to P7, um, then encourage them to come. And if you've got no older ones, then they can come and be helpers on the day. Speak to Jean or Ina. Are they both here today? Jean is. Um, and speak to Jean if you want more information about the Right for Rights Amnesty International um, card writing appeal. And um, Jean will furnish you with the information you need. Advance notice for the Youth Chris Christmas celebration. This is not a carol concert. It's not, we won't sing Hark the Herald. I know that because I've made up the programme already. Um, but it is going to be a fantastic evening for youth organisations, families, local school pupils. Um, it's going to be great fun and we invite you to come to that. There is going to be tea and coffee served in the hall after um, the, the service is finished. If you are going to that, which I encourage you to do so, please go out these doors and round the kind of out, well, it's inside, but outside, the, down the corridor um, and into the hall so that Jigsaw get a chance just to clear the decks um, from all of their activities. And the final announcement is just a reminder that on Thursday we have the funeral of Ian Morton and that is being held at um, Falkirk Crematorium. Um, and if you want more information about that, then speak to me at the end. That's this Thursday. I believe those are all of the announcements. So, put those out of your head. We're here to focus on the Jesus, the King of Kings. Today, it's Christ the King Sunday. And around the world, churches are celebrating the kingship, the lordship of Jesus. It's the final Sunday of the church year. Um, because next week we're into Advent and it's a new year for the church. Um, but today is Christ the King Sunday. And we are remembering that that King of Kings came to be born as one of us. And so I invite you to stand as you're able after a short introduction and we'll sing together. Sing we the song of Emmanuel. Let's stand.
Well done. We'll sing it again another week and you will get it right. We'll still be singing to Easter if you don't get it right. Thank you, Anne. The prayer of adoration and confession. The response is we sing the song of Emmanuel. God with us, we sing the song of Emmanuel. Let us pray. Loving God, once again we sing the song of Emmanuel. Today we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. We also celebrate your kingship, king of the universe, king of our hearts. We offer you our worship and praise. God with us, we sing the song of Emmanuel. The world is a place of great beauty and wonders. We see mighty snow-capped mountains and microscopic organisms. We see jeweled hummingbirds, brilliant butterflies, and stately lumbering elephants. For the rich variety and the majesty of creation, God with us, we sing the song of Emmanuel. The world is a place polluted by sin, sin that cuts us off from God, from one another, and creation itself. Empty of all but love, Christ the King was born among us, giving himself to cleanse us and make us one with God. God with us, we sing the song of Emmanuel. Almighty God, you have given us power, but we have not used that power responsibly. Forgive us. Creator God, you have given us wealth, but we have not used our wealth responsibly. Forgive us. All-knowing God, you have given us wisdom, but we have not used our wisdom responsibly. Forgive us. In the name of Jesus, we accept your forgiveness and humbly take the cup of salvation. God with us, we sing the song of Emmanuel. And now with grateful hearts we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you very much, Anne. Now, last week we were um, thinking about Joseph, and um, some of you were wondering why on earth we're doing Christmas stuff so early, and I explained that it's because of the material that Jigsaw and Crossover and Epic are using, and Bridge, it's their fault. Uh, so don't blame me. No, um, we are starting early and we're going to, by the time we get to Christmas, we'll know this story very, very well, as if we didn't already. Um, but today, you are going to see something um, in a way that maybe you have not experienced before. And so I'm going to need all of the, the kids to come and sit down here facing this way, because there's going to be a puppet show, and if you're over there, you won't see it. So come and sit kind of facing this way on the floor there, oh, right down on the floor, like right down here. That's it. You've done it. You've done it. So, on you go. <laughs> Over you come. You need to sit down here on the floor. Over here. Right. Elizabeth. Andrew. Andrew, down here. Right, Ely. Over you come. Right, you coming, Finley? You coming, Rory? Can you see where you are? Right, okay, that's fine. Anybody else want a front view? The rest of you are in the cheap seats at the back. Mary's headdress has fallen off. And we all know that she wore a tea towel. A dirty tea towel. It's not! <laughs> it's even ironed. Anyway. Moving on, and we're going to listen really, really carefully. 
to another bit of the Christmas story. Right, can you all see? Because you're the important ones here. Are we ready? God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a girl engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph and the girl's name was Mary. Hello everyone, I'm Gabriel. Hello everyone, I'm Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning, you're beautiful with God's beauty. Beautiful outside and in. God will be with you. Mary was thoughtfully shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that, but the angel reassured her. Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will have a son and call him Jesus. He will be great and and will be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will rule Jacob's house forever. There will be no end ever to his kingdom. But how can this happen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, your baby will be called the Holy Son of God. Nothing you see is impossible with God. Yes, I see it all now. I am the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let's let it happen, just like you said. And so the angel left her. Because she said yes, Mary became the mother of Jesus, who is Christ the King. I think we need our puppeteers to come out and take a bow. And a thank you to um, Kate and Anton. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, thank you. Mary was so surprised that she lost her tea towel. And we know now that she had bright green hair. That detail is missing from Luke's gospel. Anyway, there we go. Mary said yes to God. And then all through the Bible, when we read all the stories about God, the love for us, then what we discover is that God is saying yes to us. So Mary said yes to God, but actually God is saying yes to us time and time again. And um, today we are going to celebrate um, a meal together, which is a reminder to us of God's big yes to each one of us. And um, sometimes you might think, well, I don't really understand all that's going on. Well, you can join my club then, because I don't understand it either. But I do understand that God gave his yes to me and that he loves me. And so we're going to sing a song just now. Well, maybe we're going to do the montage, are we? Who's got an order of service in this, this place? Me, eventually. Oh. We're doing the montage first and then we're going to sing a song. Is that all right? Look out for your photographs. All the light photos are coming. Perhaps. If not, I'll need to dance. Oh, good.
beautiful picture of reminding us that Jesus came to be the light, Jesus who gives us his yes. And we're going to sing a song just now that asks a question. Um, and the question is, do you love Jesus? And um, hopefully you'll be able to answer, yes, I love Jesus. Now that might be that you love him loads. You're just starting to love him. And it's a wee bit and you're not quite sure yet. But we love because Jesus loved us first. We say yes to God because he gave us the yes first. So let's um, sing this. And... We'll um, do it as a question and answer. So let's have, I tell you what, let's start off with the kids and me asking the question and we'll get the grown-ups to answer, okay? Right, you guys come up here. Come up here with me. Right, so we're asking a question and we're going to watch and see how the adults answer this. Sorry, Slavic, there you go. Do you love Jesus? Yes, I love Jesus. Are you sure you love Jesus? Tell me why you love Jesus. Right, now we all sing together. them answering the question so when we get them to ask the question now we can give our answer right so one last time we'll just sing it the once um, and the the grown-ups are going to ask us you ready singing and beautiful words so i need you to go and sit with your growing up just now um mum dad grand whoever it is that's brought you and we are going to celebrate a feast a meal that talks about that love and god's yes to us And this meal is for anyone who loves Jesus. And I've heard lots of you singing that just now. For everyone who loves to lo love, longs to love him just a wee bit more. And then um, during this meal together, we are going to use the little cups that are on your, your seat. Now, I'm going to show you just now how you open them. So that when we get to the point of opening them, you are not stressed. So the secret is that you snap down. The, front, the, the bit that points out, you snap it down, that releases the top layer, which means you then get the wafer that's inside, the bit of bread. And once you've done that, it's easy to remove the silver bit, which gives you access to the red juice, which is symbolizing wine there. Okay, so snap down and... If you get, don't do it just now, we're not doing it yet. I did say that. Right? Um, if you get stuck, 
then just ask somebody to help you because this is about us being together, sharing a meal. It's not about just looking after our own, but we're looking out for each other. And if you get really, really in a fanko, then one of the children will be able to open it for you because <laughs> they usually go through about three. Right, so that's what we're going to use. And the things that we use are not nearly as important as the person that we are remembering. So in some churches and in some places, you might have um, had communion and it's been um, bigger goblets and silver or there's been bread passed around. That doesn't matter. What matters is who we're remembering. And it's Jesus who loves us and who gave us his yes. So we're going to pray just now. And um, I want you just to listen to the words I'm saying. And at the end, if you think, yeah, then you say, amen. Let's pray. Lord, at just the right time, you came to a young girl named Mary. And you told her about a new way. You promised her a son who would be called Jesus. You promised her that in that son, the world would be changed. In Advent, you speak to us, Lord, from a stable in a child born into poverty, a child who grows to maturity, when you will then speak to us in bread and wine, in dying and rising. This morning, Lord God, we ask that you'd speak to each of us, that you would give us your yes once again, that you would tell us once again how much we are loved, and that you would hear our faltering, feeble, yes. Our I love you, even at the times when we've got questions. God, you are here with us as Emmanuel. Jesus, your name means he saves. So meet with us now, we pray and save us. Amen. The words on the screen are not particularly clear. Um, George, would you mind putting the lights off up here on the platform? Is that okay? That will be better. Thank you. Okay, so let's have um, this side of the church use it in the words in yellow and you respond with the words that are in pink. Are we ready? We pray today that our God will forgive the choices we make and the ways that we live because we are the people who know Christ is King. We are the people who know Christ is King. We're going to say a, a number of statements of faith and during this, if you can join in with um, the words that are on the screen, Christ has died Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And I want to see um, folks doing some um, movement with that as well. So Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We'll try that all together. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We believe that God creator spoke and brought the world to birth. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We believe our Saviour Jesus lived and died with us on earth. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We believe the Holy Spirit soaks the world with love and grace. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. This we share with every Christian throughout time in every place. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And there we see Seeger Kuder's beautiful picture of the Last Supper. We cannot see Jesus' face other than it reflected in the wine, but we see his hands holding the bread and the people that he shared this last meal with. And Jesus gave an example and an instruction to his friends then and in every age that um, we should do what he did with his closest friends. And at the end of the meal together, Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks to God and he blessed it. And he said, as he broke it, 
This is my body, and it's broken for you. Broken for you. Eat and remember me. And later, he would take the cup from the table. And as he looked at his friends, he would say, this cup is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Drink from it, all of you, and remember me. At Christmas, we remember the birth of a child in a stable. Today, we remember Christ the King who gave his life because he loved us and he was giving us his yes. Jesus took ordinary things that were on the table anyway, bread and wine, and he gave them a brand new meaning, a new significance. And Jesus also gave thanks before he shared those things. And so we are going to be led in thanks just now by one of our children, and I'm not sure who it is that's doing it, Scott. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the bread and wine, and thank you for Jesus, the King of Kings. Amen. Please join in the words in the hymn. God, the true God, God, the true God, is the Lord, is the Lord, holy, 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 thank you, God, thank you, God. We've brought our thanks to God, and now we are going to celebrate together. We ask that God's Holy Spirit would come and move amongst us and make this meal something very, very special as we remember Jesus' love for us. We ask that the Holy Spirit would come and take what is slightly ridiculous, your little pots with juice and a wafer, and make it into something that reminds you of Jesus' body broken and his blood shed. The Holy Spirit comes amongst us, and he changes the situation, and he changes us as his people. So we are going to celebrate together. And so I invite you now to take the bread. And we're going to wait until everybody is ready. And then we're going to eat together because that is what communion is all about, being united. So again, if you need help, just indicate that. Is anybody still struggling to get into their bread? No, we're all there. We're thinking about Jesus, the King, his love, his death, his yes, his body broken for us, and we eat together. Again, we're going to wait for one another as we um, drink the wine. And so if you can get access to that, if you need help, just indicate. We're going to wait for one another. Does anybody need a hand to get into the, the wine over there? We're thinking about Jesus the King, his love, the new life, the new relationship that he offers, his yes to you and me. The blood of Christ poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Let's drink together.
we love because you first loved us, King Jesus. Show us what it means to live as your people in the days that lie ahead. Remind us day by day that we need to make room for you, just as Mary made room for you. Help us to give you our yes, just as Mary said yes. We know that you have come to us. Thank you. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us all. We're going to share the peace by using sign language. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Amen. Thank you for sharing in our meal together and for helping one another to remember that it's all about Jesus. We're going to sing a song just now that is um, full of hope and expectation. Some of you will recognise it straight away as Mary's Magnificat. Um, Others will just recognise it as it's a good tune um, and a great hymn to sing. But let us focus on um, the greatness of God as we sing this and as our youngsters make their way out to crash, bridge, jigsaw, epic and crossover. Please stand as you're able after a short introduction and we'll sing Tell Out My Soul. The reading this morning is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favoured woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. 
his kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a month and is now in her a son and is now in her sixth month, for the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Amen and thanks be to God. Thank you, Kirsty. Last week, we thought about Joseph. And if you weren't here last week, then I'm hoping that you know that the Joseph we're talking about is the Joseph associated with Mary rather than Joseph and his technicolor dream coats. Joseph, a man who was righteous, he was compassionate, noble, godly. Joseph, told in a dream that he should take Mary to be his wife and that he should give the baby that she bore the name Jesus. Even although there were so many cultural barriers to overcome, Joseph said yes to all of that. Today, we move from Matthew's gospel to Luke's gospel. And um, whilst Matthew gives us pretty scant detail about the birth, pretty much focusing on Joseph's reaction, Luke gives us Mary's story. So if you want the full account of Christmas, you need Matthew and Luke's gospel because you only find the shepherds in Luke. You only find the Magi in Matthew. Both of them together give a much fuller story. But Luke gives Mary's story. And so it's maybe not that surprising that there are more details about the birth and the bit before the birth. More detail because it's from the mum's perspective. I don't know, maybe Lawrence could tell you more about the birth of Josiah and Esther. He was there. I really only remember two things. The first is, I remember how I have never loved anyone the way I loved the midwife. I wanted her to come home with me. And I remember how after hours of labor, I hadn't eaten anything. And then someone, it might even have been Gillian, arrived with tea and toast, and Lawrence ate it. <laughs> Ten and a half years later, and he's still not forgiven for that. <laughs> so what do we know about Mary? Well, not very much. This is not moving on. Brad, can you move it on, man? It's not moving. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. We're told three times in that short passage that Mary was a virgin and last week we thought a bit about that I'm not going to go into that again we're told that she was from Nazareth a political backwater in northern Judea it was viewed with real suspicion by those in the south Nazareth was full of Gentiles and uh, many of the Jewish residents of Nazareth had pursued um, relationships friendships with gentile people they were doing what was were considered um, gentile jobs and trades so nazareth really was pretty scummy in terms of the jewish hierarchy places where you should live so god is planning his definitive rescue plan this is it his bold mission to rescue humanity from itself from its brokenness and its shame and who does he choose to be fundamental in the fulfillment of this plan a young girl who probably mixed with a lot of gentiles and who lived miles away from the religious epicenter of jerusalem into a patriarchal misogynist separatist traditional religious society 
the Son of God is born to a wee lassie from Nazareth. That actually sets the scene for the whole of Jesus' ministry. Here is the Savior of the world reaching out to the lost, the rejected, the marginalized, even at the point where he is but an embryo in Mary's womb. Jesus is coming to the poor. Who is the first person to show hospitality to the Son of God? It's Mary. She can have her womb. Who is the first disciple of Jesus? It's Mary, giving her yes. Does she fully understand what she's doing? I doubt it. But oh my goodness, Mary challenges us to trust, to really trust. I love the way that Gabriel, um, whether or not he had a Mohican, remains to be seen, but Gabriel reassures Mary right at the beginning. Twice he tells her, you are favoured by God. You're loved, you're chosen. And then she te he tells her what kind of baby she's going to have. He will be very great. He will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. And then at verse 35, so the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the son of God. So this baby you're going to have, Mary, he's very great. He's the son of the most high. He's David's son. He's ruling over God's people. He's reigning forever. He's holy. He's the son of God. Whoa. What did the rest of us know about our kids before they were born? Even with the most advanced scans and testing, you know very little. You might know the sex of the baby before they're born, although even that is wrong sometimes. We might know if there are genetic abnormalities, but do we know anything about their character, their role, their purpose? No, we don't know anything of that. My goodness, my mom and dad are still questioning my character, my role, and my purpose 51 years on. Mary knows that this is no ordinary baby, not just because of the way she will conceive, you will conceive and give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus. How? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Now, that's unusual. But that's not the most staggering element of the story. The identity of the baby is astounding. No wonder Gabriel has to tell Mary not to be afraid. I used to think that Gabriel was saying that because... It's not every day you see an angel, right? So an angel appears and he says, oh, by the way, don't be scared. All right, okay. Then I used to wonder if Gabriel said, don't be afraid, because he was telling Mary, an unmarried virgin, that she was going to have a baby, and that must mess with your head. But now I get it. Gabriel tells Mary not to be afraid because he's going to explain to her exactly the kind of baby that's going to grow within her for the next nine months. He'll be very great. The son of the most high. David's son, ruling over God's people, reigning forever. Holy son of God. That's terrifying. Don't be afraid. Gabriel is emphasizing this baby's divinity, authority. This wee scrap born into abject poverty will be like every baby needing everything done for him. But this baby is very great, the son of the most high, David's son, ruling over God's people, reigning forever, holy son of God. You would want an angel telling you not to be afraid if you'd just been given this news. A visit from Gabriel changed Mary's life forever, but it changed the course of history forever as well. That visit from Gabriel to Mary changed your life it changed your life. Luke 1 shows God taking the initiative, intervening on the trajectory of human nature. Luke chapter 1 shows us the depths of God's love for the people he'd created. 
Luke 1 shows the lengths to which God will go in order to redeem the mess and heal the brokenness and bring forgiveness, wholeness. Luke 1 is the midpoint in all history. Everything before God chooses to become a baby born as one with us. And then the purpose, the new covenant, everything that comes as a result of Jesus being born. It was all God's initiative. He took the first step. Gabriel put it this way. What God says will always come true. Some of you might know it better as, for nothing is impossible with God. God takes the initiative. Nothing is impossible for God. But do you know this? He still needed Mary to say yes. It needed her yes. God has taken all the initiative in reaching out to you and to me. We don't need to search for God. God has already found us. We turn back to God and we discover that he's already running to meet us with his arms open wide. We reach the very depth to which we can sink and we discover that actually there is God. God is holding us. God has taken the initiative in reaching out to us. He pleads with us, but it needs our yes. Who knows where that yes might take us? It won't be a virgin birth, in case you were worrying about that. It might be that this Christmas, our yes to God means that we interact with our families in a different way. That we give more to those who are in need instead of giving more to those who already have everything they need. It might be that our yes rises up within us as a challenge to injustice, campaigning for something different, working for change. Your yes to God might take you places you wouldn't even have dreamt of. Your yes to God might mean this afternoon you do something different. Lift the phone to somebody who's lonely. Chat to somebody after church who you know has been going through a bad time. Saying yes to God today might mean that we view the next five weeks in the lead up to Christmas as something that's really holy and special and full of peace and purpose rather than something that we just endure or rush through in the chaotic run up to the magic day. Will we make space to wait and to rest, to be still in Advent? Does that get your yes? The house groups looked at Home and Hunt's very famous picture, The Light of the World. It shows Christ knocking on the door, meant to represent the door of our lives. And um, there is no handle on the outside of that door. It can only be opened from the inside. It takes your yes to open the door. God did not force himself on Mary. He won't force himself on you. But perhaps today, you will hear those words of Gabriel whispered to you. Don't be afraid. And maybe you'll have the courage to whisper back. I'm the Lord's servant. May everything you've said about me come true. Yes. Yes. Come into my life. Take your place. It's time. Do with me what you want this Christmas. I give you my yes. Amen.
response with God. We're going to sing a song that speaks about that king of kings coming to reign and to rule, but also to work through us. Um, that's the chorus that's up on the screen first. Is that what you're starting with, Alison? No. Can we go? That's it. Thank you. Let's stand as we're able after a short introduction and sing King of Kings. Our offering prayer. Dear God, for us you gave everything, even your own son. Now we bring to you our offerings, the offering of our money and the offering of ourselves. Use it and use us in the work of your kingdom. Amen. And now the prayer of intercession. The response is, to say yes. Help us, like Mary, to say yes. Let us pray. Today, Lord, we take the cup of salvation and call upon your name, the name above all names, blessed Redeemer, glorious Lord, King of Kings, that your will may be done and not ours, Help us, like Mary, to say yes. O God of all justice and peace, we cry out to you amid the pain and trauma of violence and fear which prevails in the Holy Land. Be with those who need you in these days of suffering. And while we pray to you, O Lord, for an end to violence and the establishment of peace, we also call for you to bring justice and equity to the peoples. 
guide us into your kingdom where all people are treated with dignity and honour, that your will may be done and not ours. Help us, like Mary, to say yes. Loving God, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for all those suffering or afraid, that you will be close to them and protect them. For the Prakaya family who worship with us here, for the world leaders, that they may be given strength and wisdom to guide their choices. May peace and justice become a reality for the people of Ukraine and for all the world, that your will may be done and not ours. Help us, like Mary, to say yes. King and head of the church, hear our prayer for your church here and throughout the world. You have commissioned us to tell, teach, and tend, to transform and treasure. Show us how. You have called us to be lights in a dark world. Show us how. You send us out to be peacemakers. Show us how. That your will may be done and not ours. Help us, like Mary, to say yes. We pray for this month's charity, Samaritan's Purse, for every group that meets in our building this week, for fish and film, time to pray, Boys Brigade, and plans for Major Amma, for the sick, at home or in hospital, and those who are bereaved, hear our prayer, that your will may be done and not ours. Help us, like Mary, to say yes. In the name of Christ the King. Amen. Joyce, thank you. A reminder that there's tea and coffee, juice and biscuits being served through in the Eric Liddell um, immediately after the service. But for just now, we're going to bring our time of worship and reflection to a close by singing words of a great hymn, um, reminding us that this is Christ the King Sunday, Christ who came to be one with us, but who is Lord of the universe. Please stand as you're able after an introduction and we'll sing, crown him with many crowns.
join in the words in Greek. Help us, Lord, by our words and actions to tell the good news of Jesus. Mark us with your word. Help us, Lord, to live as people who teach and learn together. Mark us with your spirit. Help us, Lord, to live as people who tend and care for all your sheep and lambs. Mark us with your love. Help us, Lord, to live as people who transform the world by working for justice and reconciliation. Mark us with your peace. Help us, Lord, to live as people who treasure your creation. Mark us with your hope. Help us, Lord, to be all for Jesus. Mark us and send us, we pray, and we say together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.